G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Arms 4-Wheel Driving, we're going to check what the best voltage is to run your 12-volt fridge on in the back of your 4-wheel drive, whether it be lead acid voltage, lithium voltage, maybe even one of the step-up options, 13.8 volt, 28 volt, or maybe even running off 240 volt AC using an inverter from your battery. Let's get into it. First up, the performance testing. We put 10 litres of ambient temperature water into both the fridge and the freezer sections, and we conduct a 24 hour test with the various voltages. Let's check out the results. And here are the performance figures. With our temperature on the left hand side, ranging from negative 10 right through to positive 25 in degrees Celsius, with our average ambient temperature of around about 20 degrees Celsius. So the first cap off the rank, lead acid battery. Now that has a nominal voltage under load of about 12.6 volts. So that's what I use to simulate the lead acid battery chemistry. And here are the results. So the orange line represents the air temperature inside the freezer section, and the blue line represents the air temperature inside the fridge. Couple of interesting things to note. The minimum temperature just after the 12 hour mark was about negative 4.6 in the freezer section. We actually reach what's called a point of hysteresis here. So that's when the compressor actually turns off and turns back on, trying to maintain that temperature. And the fridge section here, of course, the fan moves the air from the freezer section to the fridge section to cool it down and trying to maintain that temperature in the fridge section. Right here, 12.6 volts battery performance. What about lithium iron phosphate with its increased battery voltage? Now the lithium iron phosphate battery has a nominal voltage of around about 13 volts under load and that's up 0.4 of a volt over the lead acid battery voltage nominal voltage of about 12.6. But does that equal more performance? Well, with an angle fridge, no it does not. <laughs> so it's very similar performance in the fridge section, but not nearly as good performance in the fridge section. We did finally reach a point of hysteresis as you can see over here, but more voltage doesn't necessarily equal better performance. But what about the 13.8 volt step up? Now the 13.8 volt step up being fed 13 volts outputs around about 14 volts at this sort of current draw. But does it equal more performance? Okay, as we can see by the gradient here, yes, it certainly does. It most certainly does. We've got an increased gradient here, a substantially increased gradient here, which tells me it's getting colder quicker. We've also got to a much colder point here of about negative seven as opposed to negative 4.6, I think it was. And again, we reached a point of hysteresis here. So our best performance so far, by far, is the 13.8 volt step up. What about if we increase the voltage? What about to 24 volt system charging voltage which has a round about 28 volt output. So our 28 volt step up being fed 13 volts was outputting just about bang on 28 volts. Where are we going as far as performance is concerned? <laughs> okay, well, I didn't see that one coming. Yes, it's second best, but it's nowhere near as good as the 13.8 volt step up outputting about 14 volts. Hmm. Okay. What about AC? What about if you directly plug it into an AC outlet, normally in Australia about 220 to 240 volts? Now considering that the unique refrigerant pump inside an angle fridge actually runs from AC, that I would have provided the best performance for the angle fridge from an AC voltage supply. So let's have a look at the results. No, not nearly as good. The ambient temperature was slightly higher at the start, but if you have a look at the gradients there, the temperature inside the fridge is not nearly as good as the 28 volt step up and can't even hold a candle to the 13.8 volt step up. So whilst the AC might be great for cooling down in your garage when you've got the time to do it, well, it can't hold a candle to the 13.8 volt step up. So as far as performance is concerned, the 13.8 volt step up being fed 13 volts into your Engel 75 combi is the king. Well, we have a crystal clear winner as far as performance is concerned, and that's the 13.8 volt step up. Now, I do have links down in the description if you want to purchase a 13.8 volt step up. Full disclosure, they're Amazon affiliate links, so while it won't cost you any more, the channel will get a kickback to help keep creating content like this. But now, what about battery usage? Which one uses more battery? Let's check out the results. Now for the Engel Variable Voltage Battery Usage Comparison. 
On the left hand side here, zero to 2000 watt hours. That's not amp hours. And the reason we're using watt hours as opposed to amp hours is we have two different battery chemistries here are putting two different voltages. So you can't really fairly compare it using amp hours. But I will put amp hours in the brackets there for those who are more familiar with it. Let's start off with lead acid. So we used around about 922 watt hours or about 73 amp hours. What about the lithium? Well, the lithium was fairly close actually, 1,007 watt hours or around about 77 amp hours. Now, when it comes to a 13.8 volt step up or any step up for that matter, we have losses. Anytime you're converting one voltage to another, you get losses. <laughs> and we didn't miss a trick here. 1,318 watt hours or a little over 101 amp hours. And now that in comparison with the voltage which it was being fed, from the lithium ion phosphate of 13 volts represents an extra 31%. But we did get a lot better performance. What about the 28 volt step up? Again, even more, 1,484 or about 113 amp hours of battery usage over that 24 hour period. And that increase is 47%. Now finally, the 240 volt inverter. So we're feeding at 13 volts, the same voltage as the lithium ion phosphate puts out but we need to convert it from DC to AC, and that always incurs losses. And it didn't miss a trick in this one, 1,932 watt hours, or 158 or thereabouts amp hours, and that represents an increase of 92%. So if you're looking for efficiency, don't plug your angle fridge <laughs> into your inverter, or performance for that matter. But where is our best compromise? Because life's all about compromise, and here it rides, 31% extra battery, but if you've got the extra battery to play with, especially if you're running something like a lithium ion phosphate battery, it's probably not that much of a big issue that you can put that extra 31% in to get that massive increase in performance. Now, if you're at all interested in performance and economy of your 12 volt fridge, it looks like you don't plug it into your AC inverter at all, because you'll get not too much of either. But if you are interested in the best compromise, especially with the adoption of lithium ion phosphate chemistry batteries in four wheel drives, it looks like 13.8 volt step ups is where it's at. That's your best compromise. Now, the astute amongst you will have noticed, I'm not running a fridge cover on this fridge. Now, if you're interested why and don't know, click the link up above and we'll sort that out in no time flat. Now guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.